Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We're getting mail so frequently now that I'm not sure there's any need to even mention it. <laughs> Why don't you put up the letter? Santee, how about addressing the part episode for the cowboy? Various viewers. You know what? Just just do the episode, okay? The cowboy is probably the most recognizable icon of the Old West. A pioneer tough as boot leather with one of the most difficult careers in the era. If you do any Old West living history, movies, or gunfight shows, you're gonna be a cowboy at some point. Over the years, however, the dress of the 19th century cowboy has been embellished and exaggerated. Nice outfit. Thanks. So is yours. Thankfully, historians have spent many hours researching to provide us the information we need. Let's go from the ground up. <coughs> Boots were usually tall, ending somewhere below the knee. This protected the legs while on the horse. Commonly a square toe, brown or black, that's up to you. Spurs were used to signal the horse to do what you want them to do. It is said they also wore them in town as befitting their prideful nature. Many varieties can be found on the web, and yes, we'll do a future episode on spurs. Work pants were generally tough to survive the long hours on horseback. Some reproductions available today have a reinforced seat for that very purpose. They didn't have belt loops, rather a cinch in the back for fit adjustment. Some Westerners were known to put a belt on anyway over the pants to keep them up. Braces, or suspenders, were also used for that purpose. However, many recovered photos don't show cowboys wearing them. Braces were prevalent with vests or suits, but laborers generally abstained from them. My guess is they just got in the way. Chaps, as discussed in a previous video, were a necessity in some parts of the country. Leggings like these are also a popular option. Guns and gun belts are acceptable, but keep in mind that the cowboy didn't have a lot of money, so a firearm, if he did have one, could be an older model conversion or even a cap and ball. Sure, some of them saved up for fancy pistols and repeating rifles. Just make sure it fits your character. The shirt was almost certainly store-bought, and those were usually one size fits all. As mentioned in a previous video, they were a pullover style with buttons only going about halfway down. The bib shirt was a fancy one that was also common. John Wayne made these famous in some of his movies. A vest was optional. It did offer protection from the elements and the pockets were useful. If a cowboy was going to town, he most likely would have worn a vest to conform with Victorian dress standards. You know what? I'm happy. Thick leather cuffs came about toward the end of the century and provided protection for the roper. This is another item probably not seen on a cowboy during a night on the town. The bandana was extremely useful for many reasons, and no doubt every cowboy had at least one. If going to town, the cowboy could even fashion it into a tie to spiff up a bit. Lastly, the hat. These varied from region to region, in the south, wide flat frames were common, where up north there seemed to be more emphasis placed on the shaping of the crown. The black hat for bad guys and white hat for good guys was not a thing back then, so choose whatever color you want. Yep, except pink. A bonnet string, also known as a hat string, could be used to keep it on during windy weather. Oh, and don't worry, there is documentation to their existence. It's important to note that these men and boys probably owned two sets of clothes. They would wear out just about everything on one cattle drive, and part of their pay went to buying new stuff. So depending on which skit you're doing, your cowboy could be spiffy or worn out. Today, companies like Buckaroo Bobbins provide historically accurate patterns for individuals who are stitch friendly. Clothiers like Wamaker and Frontier Classics provide off-the-rack outfits that meet the needs of those of us who intend to be historically accurate. Well, folks, that's it on Cowboys Dressing the Part. Uh, today we have a modern cowboy with us, Mr. Ken James. Hey there, modern cowboy. And of course we got Dirty Dan, as you all know. Howdy. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hey, everybody. Ken, Ken, hey, Ken. Hey, ease up, Turbo. Ooh. Hey, take it easy over here. We we just got started here, and sorry. that's my line. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's kind of John's line. Yeah. Wait, sorry. what do you mean kind of line? Line? Hey! Anyway, <laughs> folks, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. See ya. Mm-hmm.